Hey guys, welcome to this week's show. This week's show is about what tools you're gonna need on a boat. If you're getting ready to go cruising and you, you don't know what am I gonna need and you think you need to take the whole garage with it, you, well, you may be right, but not really. I'm gonna go through the must-haves of what I feel for me and my boat, what I need out there and, and my spares kits and, and my extra kits and, and what I have out there as far as tools go. So the first thing you're going to want to have on your boat, as far as, is, is I have my go-to bag, and, and I have three or four bags, but this is my go-to bag. This is what I grab. It's got my basic stuff in it, so when I go to work on something, I can grab this bag, and I don't got to go search for any specialty tools. Now, with that being said, and I'll get into what's in the goodie bag here in a second, with that being said, are, you're going to be doing upgrades to your boat and major repairs to your boat, you're going to have a lot more of these specialty items. If you're not going to be doing uh, do-it-yourself projects on the boat, you probably don't need a lot of this stuff. I have a lot of this stuff because I do a lot of this stuff myself, and I, and I like to install stuff myself, and work on stuff, and repair stuff, and make upgrades. So you need a lot of these kind of things on the boat. So all the specialty tools that I have here, some of them only get used once a year. But they're always getting used with, with other boats and, and other people that we know. Uh, you're always loaning your tools out or they're needing that specialty tool. And likewise, I might not have a, a specialty tool, so I get it off of somebody else. So that's the, that's the kind of things we do out here on the water. So that being said, we'll jump right in and, and we'll just get right into my go-to bag first. And then I'll get into all the rest of the tools. So my go-to bag, one, one of the most important things, or, or important things you're going to have on a boat, and you will need this whether you're a do-it-yourself guy or not, is a voltmeter. You're going to need a voltmeter. We use this fluke voltmeter. And once again, guys, any of these things you see here, I think most of them you can go to a link down below here and you can click on our uh, website and you can go to where you can buy all of these products and it kicks back a few cents to us every time you buy something on Amazon or something like that. But you're going to need a voltmeter. Uh, I use fluke meters. I always have ever since I've been around. I think they're some of the best meters out there. And then I also have a little uh, fluke uh, kit with me that uh, has different connections in it. it has an amp meter reader thing it's got different uh, ends where you can put them inside a tight spot put it on the wire and you don't have to sit there and try to hold it and look over at your your meter and see what the reading is so little I don't know what they call these little kit wire kits whatever they're called but this is a must-have you need this on the boat before you you go anywhere and you need to know how to use it next on the board there is uh, I know it seems simple but have a I don't know what they call these dead dead blow mallets where they have the sand in there I think it's a dead blow I'm not quite sure I use this more than any other thing it doesn't rust it's good for hitting on things you don't want to dent up very bad so having one of these is handy while we're on the subject of uh, electrical we've got our this is basically your full electrical kit so I've got uh, my meter right here and then I need my electrical pliers and the tools I use to deal with electrical connections. The first thing you need a pair is have a pair of dikes. And you need to have a pair, of, and I have several pairs of each of these pliers because they rust and, and so I WD-40 them up, stick them in a deal. And so I always have extra wire strippers. You need some good wire strippers. So I have you several sets of wire strippers. They rust up too. I keep WD-40 on them all the time. There's probably other things I could use to put on them. I have a, a set of crimpers. These are special crimper, they, that's all they are is for crimping different kinds of things, insulated, non-insulated type uh, terminal connections. And I have my number nine Klein pliers. These are lineman pliers, or number, they call them number nines because they're nine inches long. But these are my main set of electrical tools that I have. While we're on the subject of elect electrical, you need to have you a, uh, a terminal kit, which is uh, this kit right here. And it has all different sizes of butt splices, it has uh, ring connectors like that, and and uh, that's basically what you need. And, and all of the stuff you bring on a boat needs to have uh, heat shrink on it. And I prefer the heat shrink terminal connections, no matter what size they are, and, and multiple gauges. Uh, that has the glue in it, so when it melts, it, it the glue comes out and it seals it. It's very sealed, and, and it works really well. So have a big assortment, lots of this stuff now. How much of this quantity of this stuff, if you look in here, you can see that there's a lot of stuff in here because I've done a lot of a lot of projects. So when I'm buying parts and pieces, I buy it in bulk so that I have extras when I when I need it. Also on the electrical side that I didn't mention because I am a do-it-yourselfer kind of guy, I also have uh, the ability to 
crimp battery cables and uh, so I have this hydraulic crimper hydraulic press to crimp big lugs for you guys who don't know what lugs are but that that's so that I can crimp the big battery cables and these are lugs right here if you didn't know what they are and I have a different size of assortment of these things so these are these are lugs and they, they go into this this uh, and, and all these tools are relatively cheap now I use this thing probably once a year if that it's just something I don't get out anymore now when I'm doing projects like solar panels and wiring for solar panels this thing was out all the time but that's uh that's what I use there for uh, for uh, electricity and that basically oh one other thing I call these things rotters uh, some people call them uh, fish tapes fish tape rotter whatever you want to call it and this is so you can run wire in tight places and, and get it back to you uh, wire lines ropes I mean this thing comes useful for all kinds of things and I have two of these on the boat uh, very very handy to have on the boat that's my electricity and oh and then I have bags I have a bag like this now this would be more do-it-yourself or this is my electrical bag and it has all my a lot of heat shrink in it it has uh, all kinds of connections you know to zip tie stuff and lots of different size of tubing heat shrink tubing so that's uh, that's very important. This is this is stuff I don't think you can live without on a boat. You need to have good terminal, good electrical tools on your boat because almost everything on your boat runs off electricity. And if you, and it's not rocket science. You can buy an electricity book, learn about electricity, learn how to use a voltmeter. That's actually kind of fun. It's kind of techno, techno, and, and it it passes the time. So that's the electricity side of things. So we've got our voltmeter. We've got our tools, our electricity tools. We've got our big crimper for heavy lugs. We've got our terminal kits, and then we got I've got my bag. So that's electricity. That's what we do for electrical. The next thing you want to have on your boat is you want to have a good headlamp. Having a good headlamp is a must, and have four or five of them. I like these Memphis Green headlamps because they recharge. They're the USB-C. They're bright, and they, they fit on my fat head. You guys have seen them in the videos, but you can click on the link and go get these. Must have. I have I think I have five of them on the boat, and they are the best. I've had North... I've had, uh, black diamond headlamps i've had the cheap ones you buy at the stores i've had everything you can imagine these last they're the best headlamps i've had getting back into my go bag the next thing i have is i just have an assortment of screwdrivers screwdrivers where you can change the ends out and those fall in the water you saw the one video so i have a bunch of spares of uh, phillips head screwdrivers flathead screwdrivers and things like that uh, i got a pair of needle nose pliers very important have four or five pair of needle nose pliers adjustable wrenches crescent wrenches there's my torch you buy this at home depot most of the places around the world and you get the propane or the butane refills you gotta have that for your electrical kits that's handy to have channel locks you need a pair of channel locks a pair of vice grips a couple pair of vice grips i don't know where my vice grips are and uh, just lots of screwdrivers big screwdrivers little screwdrivers all all different kinds of sets of screwdrivers that's very important on a boat razor blades pocket knives and, and this is my kit so that's uh that's my go kit right there on the subject of go kit and screwdrivers rechargeable drill here that's a must have you need one or two of these on the boat maybe a small one and a big one all of mine are the same and all my uh tools are the same on the boat so they all take the 20 volt dewalt that's what we use out here because that's what they had that's what the technology was at the time and uh have a bunch of extra batteries keep them charged up and uh, that's very important to have on the boat and I couldn't live without my my DeWalt tools it doesn't matter whether you use Ryobi or or uh, any of the other kind Milwaukee just have some good tools have them all the same have all the same batteries the same voltage across all your tools and these are all the the essential tools that you need to have on the boat regardless whether you do it yourself or not and also go on our feel free to go on our website you can find any of this stuff on our gear page and you can click link there and, and figure out where to buy it next thing when we was talking about screwdrivers one of the tools that i find the most handier kits that i have is, is this mac tool kit and i had this back in in the aviation business working on helicopters and stuff like that it's a screwdriver set and it's got all different kinds of heads in here and having a little ratcheting head i use this a lot you put an allen wrench set in it like this and, and uh, uh it didn't come with the kit i had to buy this extra but i have several of these little things uh, little ratchet deals to run all these these deals like this and you can get them in tight places but having a, a screwdriver kit that has all the different kinds of, of, of ends in it from the stars i don't know what the t5 sets to the allen wrenches to the to uh 
you know, small, big, and large Phillips heads, and, and having that has been, I, I used to grab this, I'm, I'm messing a lot of pieces out of it now, when I get back to the States next time, I'm going to get a brand new one of these kit. Mac Tools, if you want to send me one, I'd sure take one of these, because this is a go-to box. I grab this box in my go-to bag when I go to work on something, because I know I can find all my parts in this. Another thing you need to have on the boat is, uh, is a caliper. And you'll need to have this because when you're working on things and you're measuring things, make sure it does it metric and, and standard so that you can have both sizes. You know, I can measure depths of stuff, di the inside diameters, the outside diameters, and the depth of things right here. Make sure you bring extra, if you get an electrical one, because I, I like the electronic digital one because my eyes can see that. The, other, the old kind with the gauges is hard to read for me. So make sure you have plenty of extra batteries if you get the one with the uh, digital readout. You'll need that because you'll be trying to source some parts for your boat and they'll say, well, what size is that? What diameter is that? What length is that? That's what's going to give you that accuracy right there. This is my socket set. I bought this in Greece just at a hardware store. And uh, having a socket set, this is my metric socket set because this boat is European, so almost everything on it is metric. It has half inch drive. It has quarter inch drive set. And um, now a lot of people ask, should you buy a bunch of snap-on tools, expensive, expensive tools? No, don't buy a bunch of expensive tools because when they go in the water, they cost a lot of money to be at the bottom of the ocean. So, you know, this socket set was just a cheap socket set there where I bought it in Greece. And, and I've had it ever since, and fortunately, I haven't lost a lot of it. And, and I'd have a, a, a standard and a metric if, if I was going to have it. And I have some standard sockets that I brought with me. They're in bags, but I hardly ever get them out. Very rarely do I get them out. So... You need to have lots of drill bits. You can't have enough drill bits on the boat and you can't have enough Allen wrenches on the boat. Uh, have you two or three sets of, of drill bits, have some really hard drill bits and some bigger diameter drill bits. I'm talking about drill bits, if you're gonna do it yourself and even if you're not gonna do it yourself, I recommend you having hole saws on the boat. And this is a hole saw and I can drill up to, with this one I can drill up to 51 millimeter holes. So like if you're putting in uh, if you're putting in uh, USB chargers, those those generally take 30 millimeters. So you want to have a hole saw kit on your boat that you can make holes with. Very good to have on the boat. Have a couple if you're if you're going to be making a lot of holes through fiberglass. Fiberglass dulls this stuff really quick. So make sure you've got what you need there. Next thing I have on the boat is a tap and die set. A tap and die set basically, for those of you who don't know, allows you to take a piece of metal. If you've got a piece of a metal and and make threads on it, so you can use it as a screw. You also have the uh, other ends of it where you can screw down in a hole. So like, let's say you had to drill out a hole that had a screw broke off in it, or you have something down in there that's stuck and you can't get pliers in there to pull it out. And so you, what I'll do is I'll drill a hole in it and I'll tap it out with with one of these taps and make threads, and then I'll screw a screw down in that or a bolt, and then I'll grab that with pliers and pull that whatever that piece is I need out of there. But this is a must-have on a boat because when you need it, and I don't use it very often. I mean, I've probably used it 10 times in the last four years, but having it, it's better, it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. All right, the other must-have on a boat is a Dremel tool. This is uh, definitely a must-have. I've got two of them. I've got a little rechargeable one and a battery pack that goes with it, and then I've got the plug-in one. And the plug-in one, if I'm doing long-term do I just plug this in instead of using the battery one. But having a Dremel tool with all the little cutters and sanders and all those little things. You guys have seen me on, on the channel make uh, brushes, you know, uh, carbon brushes to fit. You can, these tools are just excellent for every little thing. Yesterday, Finn's guitar, one of his uh, tuning knobs broke off his electric guitar. And we don't have an extra set of tuning knobs, so I... I was able to take the cutter on this one and, and notch it so we at least put a screwdriver in there and tune his guitar with a tuner on until we can get replacements. So having a tool like this to fix things and, and figure things out is a, a must have. I wouldn't leave home without a Dremel tool on the boat. The next thing you're going to need on your boat, and this is a must have, is a screw kit. You're going to need a, a, a screw kit and a bolt kit that has all your screws in it. It's got different sizes of screws, stainless steel. It's all got to be stainless steel. And you need, you'll need the same kit that's bolts, machine bolts, metric and, and standard, depending on what your boat is. And you just, you want to, you want to look at your boat, study your boat. And then anytime you're at a hardware store or at a marine store, buy good quality stainless steel screws and self-tapping screws, as well as uh, 
uh, everything you think you're going to possibly need. And, and always buy, if I'm buying one part for the boat, then I buy two most of the time. If it's inexpensive, I'll just always buy, I double up on what we're doing. So then you'll learn as you go, but just to start off with, try to get you some screws that, that uh, you think are going to fit your boat and have a, a, quite an assortment there. Now, this uh, DeWalt, this is a multi-tool here. If you're going to do it yourself on a boat, these tools are the best. And the way these tools work, if you're cutting holes in fiberglass, wood, cabinets, whatever you're doing, these are the best. Now this tool is a plug-in one because normally when I'm using it, I, I use it for a long period of time and I don't like, and, and this is what they had in Greece when I bought it. But uh, you can put a blade on here, and I've never heard of these things before. Uh, never used one in my life, but you put a blade on there and you get different size blades, round blades, curved blades, uh, you, all different kinds of attachments can go on these. Blades for uh, fiberglass, steel, cutting nails, there's one for grinding. But if I want to cut a hole, like when I was doing all the installs for my B&G electronics, I'd cut a hole in the fiberglass, I could turn this on and I could just cut a hole, a precise square hole with this tool. And I think it's called a multi-tool, pretty sure that's what it's called. I don't know, but it's handy as a pocket on a shirt. So that's a, if you're going to do it yourself on a boat, you need one of these. If you're going to repair your boat, repairing fiberglass or doing any of those kinds of things, you need one of these on your boat. All right, guys. So that's the, that's some specialty tools there of what we have. Uh, next thing I have on the boat is, this is my jigsaw. And this is the 20, 20 volt jigsaw. I use this like if I'm cutting starboard or I'm making, I need to do a big piece of wood or anything I might be cutting that's big. I use this to cut and fabricate panels or different things like that. So having one of these, super good to have on a boat. I don't use it very often, but, but I do use it. All these things can be found on our website. I have an orbital sander as well, a DeWalt orbital sander, because you do a lot of sanding on a boat, especially if you have any wood on there or you're, you're repairing fiberglass and that kind of stuff. The last thing you need on the boat, and this is a must have, especially for do-it-yourselfers, is I have my, what I call my rope kit, or my line kit, and I have, basically what I have in here, is I have a uh, rope cutter, it gets hot, it's a hot iron, and it melts the line. And then I have several of these, uh, and this is my favorite kit, it's a splicing kit, and this is a from Ronstadt, and this is my favorite one, it's called a, uh, their fids is what they're called, but it's from Ronstad. It's a five-piece stainless steel splicing kit, and it has all these little things in it. And, and I use this more than anything. I mean, because when I'm bored, I'm making soft shackles. I'm doing all kinds of things with this, and it's easy to use. I really like it. Can't have enough blue tape on your boat. And then the other thing I have on the boat that I like is uh, I have good sailing knives with, with an awl on them. And then I have my uh, easy stitch. You need to have an easy stitch on the boat. If you're going to work on any sails or sewing stuff, temporary sewing stuff up without getting out the big sail right sewing machine, get you an easy stitch with some different needles and stuff. I use that all the time on the boat. And then I have an assortment of Dyneema on the boat. I've got four or five rolls. This is Dyneema. It's the stuff that goes inside of halyards for, for lifting stuff. It's the strong stuff. And you can buy Dyneema just straight or Amstil. It's also known as Amstil. I've got uh, 10 millimeter. I've got 8 millimeter five, six millimeter, five millimeter, four millimeter spools of different colors down in a hold over here. Cause I like to mess with uh, Dyneema and make different things and get rid of all, I like to get rid of all the steel shackles on the boat and, and go to soft shackles. There's a soft shackle right there. Uh, hand me the soft, those big soft shackles right there. These are the kind of soft shackles you can make on your boat. This is, a, I've made these for, for my, uh, for getting on mooring balls to put on my uh, bridle, my anchor bridle. My kids make these too and they sell them when we're in anchorages. So that's a good idea for your kids. If the teach your kids how to make soft shackles and they can sell them at anchorages, make a little cash for themselves and teaches them a little trade. So uh, that's that. Well guys, I've, uh, I've hoped you enjoyed Tool Time with Tool Time Tim. What you've seen here will get, get you, you'll be able to fix just about anything. Also we have on the boat, we have some fiberglass repair kit, repair kit stuff. I have some extra fiberglass and some uh, some uh, West Systems uh, epoxy and, and, and different things to do that. And that's a whole nother show. And I'm no expert at fiberglass. There's people out here that know how to do fiberglass. I'm not that guy. I can get it done. It's not pretty, but I get it done and it'll hold. Check out our website. Most of this stuff is on the website. If you have any other questions, please send them to me. And I can go into detail about them on a Q&A maybe later. And uh, that'll take care of that. Once again, guys, thanks for watching. And we look forward to seeing you guys out there on the water.